Okay, hi everyone. Uh, we'll have uh, our meeting in English. Or oh, it not matter. Okay, in English. <laughs> Let's start from small agenda. Uh, first, I would like to briefly describe the benefits of using clouds for big data issues. Then uh, I will tell you about uh, data processing life cycle. Then I will introduce you to a few services to build data solution. And finally, we will have a practice part of this workshop where I will show you how to work with some of the discussed services. Um, okay. Uh, of course, the clouds are not the best place to host a WordPress blog, but the clouds is very good to host your data application and big data application. There are a lot of already listed benefits, but very often those benefits are very abstract or too far from the real world. So I would like to list the benefits that I see in my daily work. First of all, it's infrastructure as a service. Clouds provides uh, everything as an infrastructure as a service solutions and that simplifies infrastructure operations. This speed up and reduce the work of the DevOps team or even can totally replace DevOps. And uh, this is positively affecting the project cost and development time. Uh, clouds provide any computing and computing and storage resources on demand. As you know, sometimes the client has really, really a lot of data and clouds can, uh, clouds can cover any needs of the volume of storage just in a moment on demand. This grants us uh, great scalability. Third is billion per minute. Sometimes we use resources only in some period in the day, for example, for batch analytics, or you want to scale out your instances in a P code, and so on. Uh, with clouds, you can request those resources, use them, and hand them back. And you will pay only for usage time. This is positively affecting project costs and scalability of a project. Uh, clouds, auto clouds provide not only infrastructure but own software as well. For example, uh, Google Cloud Platform provides uh, machine learning solution, different data processing solution, uh, different APIs like uh, translation, geo, and so on. Uh, of course, it costs some money. But using this software, you save a lot of development time to develop and maintain some functionality of your service. And uh, in general, clouds are cost effective for big data tasks uh, because I've listed a few examples of why, but every cloud has more ways to optimize uh, the costs. I will not, <clears throat> I will not deal deeply into this topic, I, but I can provide you some uh, numbers. For example, you can order PMTBOO instance and save up to record 85% uh, of instance costs. Or you can commit using an instance for one year and uh, save up to 10%. Or for more on period, you can save more if you commit uh, your using an instance for three or four years. And of course, clouds provide a good secure build. Uh, security. Clouds have strict security policies. They encrypt your stored and transfer data by private keys. And uh, clouds are regularly evaluated by independent third part audits and so on. Uh, data lifecycle steps. In most cases, the data workflow has the following four steps. It's ingestion, storage, process and analyze data, and export and visualize data. Uh, each of those steps has own tasks, issues, uh, structure of incoming data, and result data. And of course, each of those services need uh, a service, service or a set of services which will be best suited to perform needed tasks. 
um, in, 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 in ingestion stage, we ingest data from external sources. For example, we can receive different analytics data or we can grab some uh, financial data and so on. Uh, in second stage, it's storage. We need to store received information and we use different databases on this stage. Uh, next, we'll be process and analyze. In this stage, the data is transformed from raw data format into needed format. And the last, last stage is export and visualize. It's when uh, uh, we convert the results of analytics into a format that can be easily, uh, which, which we can show to our colleagues and stakeholders. Yeah, let's start uh, with overview of Google, of, uh, Google services for big data. Uh, Google Cloud Platform provides us a lot of different services that cover all popular uh, needs of data applications. Uh, all the services are integrated with uh, Google Cloud products and all of them have uh, has own pros and cons. Uh, so we'll just review what services GCP can offer for us for big data and uh, what the services do, what benefits and limitations they have, uh, pricing strategy of the services, and uh, their alternatives. Uh, first service is Cloud Data Proc. Cloud Data Proc is a, is a faster and uh, easier and cost-effective way to run Apache Spark and Apache Hadoop in uh, uh, Google Cloud. Uh, this service is a cloud native way, cloud native solutions that cover all operation related to deploy and manage Spark and Hadoop clusters. In simple terms, with DataProc, you can create a cluster, for instance, dynamically change the size of this cluster, configure this cluster, run the MapReduce jobs, and so on. Uh, the benefits of, of Cloud Data Proc, it's a uh, very fast deployment, it's a uh, fully management service, it means uh, you need just to write a code, no operation work. We can dynamically resize the cluster and it supports auto scaling by some metrics. Limitation uh, You have no choice of certain a specific version of the used framework, it means for example, a patch we have in DataProc a patch Spark is version 2.3. You can use only this version. This is all. You cannot pause and stop DataProc cluster to save money. Only delete the cluster, totally delete the cluster. But the history of job will be saved. And but we can cover the functionality via Cloud Composer. And you cannot choose uh, a cluster manager. You can use only YARN. Uh, Analogs and alternatives, it's you can set up a cluster on the virtual machines. Feel free to do it. You can use Amazon EMR service. It's uh, AWS Analog and Azure HD Insight. Uh, the pricing strategy of DataProc is you will pay only for each user instance with some extra payment. GCP uh, bills for each minute when the cluster works. I will show you it on the demo. The next service is Cloud Data 4. Uh, Cloud Data 4 is a, this is a managed service for developing and executing a wide range of data processing patterns, including ETL, batch, steam processing, uh, etc. Uh, data4 is used for building data pipelines. Uh, this service is based on Apache Beam. It's just a, a cloud wrapper for Apache Beam and support Python and Java jobs. 
Uh, the benefits, uh, data for combined batch and streaming uh, processing with a single API. It can be very fast uh, depo uh, deployed. This is a fully managed services, so you not needed any operation work. Uh, it supports dynamic uh, balancing and it supports auto scaling. Limitation uh, data flow based on a single solution, uh, therefore, it enhances all limitations of Apache Beam and uh, maximum size of a single element value in a streaming engine is 100 megabytes. Uh, I don't know any alternative in another cloud provider, so I listed only that you can set up the cluster on the, your virtual machine. Uh, the Python strategy is uh, data for jobs are built in per second and it's based on uh, the actual use of the, the service. Cloud PubSub. Uh, Cloud PubSub is a message queue broker that allows application to exchange messages uh, quickly and asynchronously. The service is based on published subscription pattern. I guess everyone familiar with this pattern. Uh, or I can describe it. This, this diagram describes this pattern. The publisher application published message to a sub uh, to a pub sub topic. A topic sent message to pub sub subscriptions. It can be a couple of subscriptions for one topic and the subscription store messages and subscriber application read messages from the subscriptions and so on. Benefits. Uh, PubSub uh, has uh, high, uh, high capacity, they are high capacity and it provides uh, high reliable communication rail. Limitations, um, it's, about we have about 10 megabytes as maximum size for a single message else 10 megabytes is a maximum size for one request it mean in case if we need to send 10 messages to requests uh, the average maximum size for each message will be one megabyte and uh, maximum attribute value is one megabyte uh, there are a lot of open source alternatives of PubSub, like Apache Kafka, RabbitMQ, ZeroMQ, and so on. Also, all clouds has own alternatives like Amazon SQS service and Azure service bus. The Python says strategy of the services you pay for transfer data per gigabyte. Uh, BigQuery. Uh, BigQuery is a data warehouse. BigQuery allows us to store and query in massive data sets up to hundreds of petabytes. And BigQuery is a very familiar to relational database by its structure and it has a table structure. Uh, use SQL uh, else and support batch and streaming writing into database. The service integrated with all GCP services, including data for, uh, and not only with GCP services, with Apache Spark, Hadoop, etc. And this is best for using in interactive querying and offline analytics. There are a lot of benefits like huge capacity up to hundreds of petabytes. Uh, it supports SQL, as I said. It supports batch and streaming writing. It supports complex queries and built in machine learning. But it's simple, stupid for now, but it exists. This is server as service. And uh, there are a lot of shared data sets, and you can share your data sets between different projects as well. 
And all popular data processing tools have interfaces to be created. Uh, limitation, it doesn't support transactions, but who need transactions in the OLAP solution. And maximum size of a single row is uh, 10 megabytes. Uh, alternatives, it's uh, Amazon Redshift and Azure Cosmos DB. And uh, pricing strategy is you pay separately for stored information per each gigabyte and uh, for executed queries. Uh, as you know, uh, with reference to executed queries, you can choose one of two payment model uh, one model is you pay for each processed terabyte or gigabyte, or you can choose a stable monthly cost. It depends on your preference and your project. Um, cloud Big Table. Uh, Google Cloud Big Table is uh, Google Snow Scale Big Table database. It's the same database that powers many core Google services, including searching, analytics, maps, and Gmail, and so on. Uh, the table is designed to handle massive uh, workloads, and it, uh, it's a great choice for operation and analytical applications, including IoT, user analytics, and financial data analytics, and so on. Uh, Cloud Big Table based on Apache HBase. As you know, Google developed the first version of Big Table and published white papers of this Big, big Table database, and then uh, open source community developed Apache HBase, and now Google developed own Cloud Big Table solution based on Apache HBase. Um, this database has a very big capacity and suggested for using if you have more than terabytes of data. And Bigtable is uh, best for time sales data and IoT data. Benefits. It has zero good performance on one terabyte or more data. Uh, cluster of this database can resize without downtime. It has incredible scalability and support API of Apache HBase. It means you can easily migrate from Apache HBase to a cloud solution, uh, Google Cloud Big Table. Limitations. It has bad performance on less than uh, 300 gigabytes of data. It doesn't suit for real-time application. It doesn't support ACID operation. And uh, technical limitation like maximum size of single value is 100 megabytes. Uh, maximum size of all values in a row is uh, 256 megabytes. Oh, maximum size of hard disk is uh, 8 terabytes per one node. And you can minimum deploy three nodes in the cluster. Uh, Analogs, you can uh, use custom deployed Apache HBase. And about pricing strategy, Bigtable is very expensive, really very expensive. You pay end for nodes, and if you remember, you can use minimum three nodes. And for storage capacity, it's, and it's totally it's really very expensive. Cloud storage, it's nothing to say about. It's just it's a blob storage for files. You can storage any amount of any size files there. It's used uh, for backups, for your own files, for your photos, and uh, different use cases. Uh, benefits, uh, cloud storage has API for any programming language. 
and supported by uh, uh, HTTP API and uh, console client. Uh, Google Cloud Storage has immutable files and it supports versions of files. It means uh, when you, if you want to uh, update your file, a uh, file will be not updated. You will write new, uh, new copy of this file. And previous version will be available as well. Um, can be available. And the cloud storage suit for any size files. You can roll the files with terabyte size or even more. And suit for any amount of files. So you can roll it in one bucket, petabytes uh, information. Uh, Analox, it's Amazon S3 and Azure Blob Storage. And Pricing strategy: Google Cloud Storage has a couple uh, has a couple pricing uh, pricing plans. Uh, in a standard plan, you pay for one gigabyte of saved data. Cloud Composer. Cloud Composer is a workflow orchestration service to manage data processing. Cloud Composer is a cloud uh, interface for Apache Airflow. And it also automates the ETL jobs. For example, you can create a data pro cluster, perform uh, different jobs there, uh, upload the results to BigQuery, and then shut down data pro cluster. But it's just a cloud native uh, way to deploy patch airflow. Benefits, uh, it can fill all gaps of other GCP solutions like uh, data probe. And uh, limitation provides the Airflow web UI interface only on a public API address. It's not very secure, secure both. And else it inherits all benefits and limitation of Apache Airflow because it's based on Apache. It is a patch airflow. Uh, cloud data prep. Uh, oh, yeah. Cloud data prep is a tool for visualize and explore and prepare data, data you work with. You can build pipelines to ETL your data uh, to ETL your data for different storages and do it in a simple and intelligent web interface. You don't need to write code, you just, uh, you can do everything in the web interface. For example, you can use data prep to build ETL pipeline to extract raw data from Google Cloud Storage, clean up this data, transform to needed view, and throw the data into BigQuery. Also, you can schedule a daily, weekly, monthly, etc. job, which will run this pipeline for new raw data. There are a lot of benefits. Uh, it really simplifies building of ETL pipelines. It provides clear and useful web interface. It automates a lot of manual job for data engineers. There is built-in schedule and uh, it uses uh, data for to perform ETL jobs. Uh, but very big limitation, the service works only with BigQuery and Google Cloud Storage for now. About pricing strategy, for data storing, you pay for data storage. It will be BigQuery or Google Cloud Storage, as I said before. And for executing your ETL jobs, you pay for Google Data for jobs. Uh, Google Cloud IoT Core. Uh, to be honest, I don't uh, have uh, experience, good experience with this, with this service. I just tried to use and that's all. Uh, 
uh, cloud IoT course is core is uh, IoT device registry in the Google Cloud Platform. This service allows you connect devices to the Google Cloud Platform, receive messages from devices, send messages to devices, and uh, and so. <laughs> Uh, IT Core use Google Pops up uh, to as a communication layer. Uh, there are I cannot tell you about any benefits and limitations because I don't have uh, production experience with the service. Uh, alternatives: it's AWS IT Core and Azure AD. And pricing strategy, you pay for data vol volume that you transfer across this service. Mm. Also, Google Cloud services. There are a couple more services that I have to mention. Some of the services are not directly related to big data tasks, and some of the services related to big data, but uh, by Google information but I did not use or cannot recommend you use uh, those services. Okay, let's start from uh, Computer on Chine. Google Cloud Computer on Chine is uh, providing you virtual machines with any performance capacity. It's just uh, virtual machines. The next is uh, Google Cloud SQL. Uh, this is cloud native solution to host your MySQL or Postgres database. It has uh, built in vertical and horizontal scaling, firewall, encryption, backups, and uh, all other benefits of using cloud solutions. And it has a terabyte capacity. And so, of course, it supports difficult queries and transactions because it's uh, because under the hood you use MySQL or Postgres. Next one is uh, Google Cloud Spanner. This is a fully managed scalable rational database service, support uh, SQL queries, auto application, transactions, and so on. It has a petabyte capacity and best for large scale database applications. Uh, that store more than a couple of terabytes of data. And this is uh, OLTP database, transaction database for real-time applications. Next one is uh, Stack Driver. Stack Driver is uh, monitoring of Google services and infrastructure and uh, of your applications that you host in uh, GCP as well. I will show on the demo the service. And Google Catalog, oh, sorry, Data Catalog and Data Fusion. I did not use those services. I will just comment about it. Uh, Cloud Data Catalog, it's a searching service by database metadata. Uh, you need the service if you have hundreds or more of storages and database and you need to search for some kind of entities in all your storages. I don't know projects who, who really need this service. And Data Fusion is a data integration service which has graphic web interface to build ETL data pipelines, some analog uh, as a data prep, but don't have experience with the service and not a lot of information about the service in the web. Cloud Data Lab. Cloud Data Lab is a way to visualize and explore your data. The service provides a cloud native way to host Python Jupyter notebooks. But I highly suggest you use virtual machine for those purposes, not the cloud data app because it has a lot of Crashes sometimes. And Google provide auto ML and platform AI, AI services. They also train and host high quality custom machine learning models with minimal efforts. Um, yeah, we discussed a lot of Google Cloud services. <laughs> 
I call, I hope that can help you to build any data solution. Of course, clouds are not a panacea, and in case if you use clouds in the wrong way, it can very affect your monster infrastructure billing. So very carefully build the architecture of your for your proposals and choose the necessary services for your needs to reach needed goals. And uh, you should always explore all benefits and limitations of each particular case. And always care about cost. And of course, remember about scalability, reliability, maintainability of your solution. Uh, there is uh, there are a couple use I prepare a couple useful links uh, a list of uh, Google's big data products and uh, different solution based on Google big data products and data engineering clubs on quick clubs where you can train uh, and learn some solution or some uh, service and so on. Uh, any questions? Are you in touch? Some of you? No? Okay. Hmm? Oh, this GCP, if you don't mind. I prefer. Yeah, this is a uh, Google Cloud platform web interface. Okay, let's start from the base functionality, it's a virtual machine. As I said before, there are a lot of uh, VMs and you can create instance with any capacity uh, in the, any region and any zone and with different uh, CPU and memory capacity. I have, I already have the couple and so I will not create a new one. Okay, uh, Google Cloud Storage, as I said, this is a file storage where you can host and uh, where you can host files. Uh, you need to create new bucket to host files. I already created one and ordered a couple of files. Yeah, and Google provide us a cloud shell where you can perform uh, different shell commands. So I will show you example how to uh, work, not with this. Uh, this shell uh, I connected by uh, SSH to one my instance, and as you see, as you, see before, as you saw before, we have a couple files in my uh, bucket, so you can easily. Uh, you can easily perform different uh, file system commands uh, to your um, Google, Google Cloud Storage. For example, we can list by ls command list all uh, files in the bucket. Uh, yeah, as you can see my two files and you can uh, create a new file and uh, and send this file to uh, Google Cloud Storage by uh, show. Okay. Um, second service is uh, let's review 
data data four, for example. Data four. There is. I did not prepare a source code, for example, but there are a lot of uh, templates, test templates. Job name. And we can choose, uh, for example, word count. And we should to type a couple of parameters. Uh, first one is word count, just count uh, rows in the file. And we have to specify a path to file issue where we will count the rows and to um, pass to where we will store uh, results. Uh, Let's try. Results and And in this way, we run temp test job, which will count all uh, all words in this file. We need some time to perform this operation, and uh, let's review BigQuery service to be more interesting and. Uh, Okay, let's first look at this. We can stop the job while we're running and we can review logs for each step or logs, uh, whole logs for every step as, as well. And uh, each of these uh, steps, it's a P collection of Apache Beam and it can be scaled uh, automatically scaled and independently and automatically scaled. If we, if some step has a lot of uh, incoming data and uh, we will set up auto scaling, of course. Uh, BigQuery. BigQuery is a data warehouse, as I said before. And uh, to use this, let's, Let's create a data set and uh, perform a couple SQL queries. Uh, to create a data set, we need uh, types and name, and location, and other options. And Kate, it's a uh, data set, it's like a database in the MySQL or Postgres. And let's create a table. Uh, we can create table from uh, different sources, for example, from file on the Google Cloud Storage. I have already uploaded the file. No, why not? Okay, it's not our, it's CSV file. And I don't remember. Table name. And we have to to describe the schema of this file. Uh, it's a CSV file, as I said before, where in the first column we have name, stink, next gender, stink as well, and 
and count of uh, people who was born in this year with this name and gender and it's integer integer and in this way we can create table with uh, data from google cloud storage yep. data appear details some information about our table uh, size the number of holes when it was created when it was modified and so on let's preview the data here it's name as i said before gender if it's uh, female and uh, and male and uh, count of babies is this name uh, as it was born in the the 2017. Okay, let's perform a couple of ways. Uh, any ideas what we have to select? No? Okay. Let's select name, gender, uh, count, from, uh, from, from, names uh, baby names you have to type and uh, data set and table name the gender is male limit of course run the job yep and we see results just random results, we can uh, set order, for example, order by count desk. Yeah. Ah, same results. Also, we can, for example, uh, select, uh, let's select some count from table. Not necessary. It's wrong. Gender. Ah, of course, uh, we need because we have some, we need to group by group by uh, gender. gender. And we don't need. And and we receive a total sum of all boys or all girls and boys who was born in that year. This is big way. Uh, I would like to show you example with Cloud Composer, but I can I have a trial account, so I cannot just deploy this service. I don't know why. Maybe it's some back in the Google. Okay. Uh, data proc, as I said before, it's easiest way to run a cluster with uh, Apache Hadoop and uh, Apache Spark jobs. As you see, I already created cluster, but we can create a new one. It's cluster name. We can choose. Uh, as you see, master node can have only yarn, source manager, and so. And we can configure set configuration for master node. It's not necessary, we need more cheaper. And configuration for each uh, slave. Gigabytes. And we can create a new cluster. Oh, I will show you an interesting example. As you see, I already have one cluster and one is running. And uh, virtual machines where the, those clusters uh, run, uh, you will see it in the, your computer engine, your VM instances. 
and you can uh, connect via SSH to each service. Okay, um, let's open a ready to use cluster. Oh, this is a job that I already created and result of this job. So let's create the same job. You can submit the job, any job. You can choose, uh, you can type ID, uh, job type, let's do it, uh, Spark, and uh, like, okay, it's uh, passed to main uh, class of the job file and path to the jar, jar files. Uh, as you see, I type here uh, um, jar on the file system of instance, but you can, uh, you can, you can load jars from the Google Cloud storage, as you see or any HDFS file system and just submit your job. The job is on. Um, maybe that's all. If someone want, I want, I can show something more deeply, describe more deeply. If it would, wouldn't take a lot of time, we can do it now. Where you are talking about the second session? No, I talking about now. I'm okay. Oh, as you see the results. Some walks. And as you can and as you can see, we don't need to set up a cluster and so on. We just create it in a couple of clicks and uh, write code or use code from templates uh, as I did and uh, run the Apache uh, job there. Yeah, that's all. And with uh, Cloud Composer, we can schedule these jobs and run it, for example, once per day to to do some batch analytics or something else. Any questions? 